previous video we have seen the concepts about lag, autocorrelation and cross correlation and also how we can understand the confidence limits and determine how many components we can use for developing any good hydrological model. In the current video we will see how we can utilize those concepts learned in the previous videos and make data preparations for developing a good hydrological model. Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this video as mentioned earlier, we will see how we can make the data to use it for hydrological modeling. So if you remember, the first column we used in the previous video as well is precipitation of a certain day, discharge of a certain day and another column data with discharge starting from the next day. So the first thing we need to know exactly to develop the data to make a good model is you need to understand how many lags uh, do we need to do to the data to have good information in itself so that the model can understand the trend. You can directly use these two data and put this as an output in a linear regression model or an artificial neural network model and can develop a good relationship and get good results. This model predicts one day ahead discharge because as you see here, this is let's assume it is uh, 1st January's discharge. We are asking the model to predict the 2nd January discharge. So, to understand this, we need to uh, get the lags. So, as if you have seen the earlier video, I have shown you how the lag uh, components can be obtained using autocorrelation and cross correlation. If you have not yet watched it, you can watch uh, the video in the description. If we see here, we find autocorrelation. So, we are trying to predict discharge. So, we will see what is the discharge autocorrelation. Again, we have already discussed it in the previous video. So, you see, we will take a confidence limit of 0.4 and see how many variables are above 0.4 so that we can use them for preparing the data. So if you see here there are up to uh, 9 variables and almost 10 variables are there but I would like to take a value greater than 0.5 in this case uh, just to have lesser variables to explain it to you. So we will see we have to take 5 lags for discharge. Let's remember that. and we will also see cross correlation which tells us how many precipitation lags can be used for getting a good uh, model. So the first uh, column is precipitation, second is discharge and we will see the thing. And here again I will choose a value with uh, greater than 0.40. So I will be taking again here 5 uh, lag values to develop the data so that we can get good model. So as you have seen the discharge and precipitation lags are 5 and 5. Let's go to excel and see your data and uh, make the data so that we can use it. So as mentioned again today's precipitation, today's discharge and tomorrow's discharge. So now what we need to do is do lags. So let's see how these lags can be done. I have already put the lag data in the sheet so that I can explain. So the first column is the original set which we can also term it as zeroth lag of precipitation. When we leave one row here then it becomes one lag, this becomes two lag, three, four and so on. Similarly, even discharge as we saw in the plots earlier, it is also we wanted it to take 5 lags. Similarly, it will become 0th lag, 1, 2, 
3, 4 and 5. And this is the target data set if you see the next day value. So now if you see here we are having empty rows here, empty rows here and also in the below at the end of the data you will have similar phenomenon where you see this should have been the original length but because we are taking lag uh, this data is excess. So what can we do about it because we cannot just directly use this with zero values as inputs. So to do it in a correct way one method is to remove the first five rows in all the elements including the inputs and targets as well as at the bottom also. So first we'll see how we do at the top. If you see here when we try to remove all the data sets here we are getting a value of 19 right. So if we think 19 is today's data so we should have one data of yesterday if we are taking one lag right. So if we want yesterday's data so it will have yesterday's component in today's. So if you see the value of one lag here you see there is one value already before the 19 which you can already see here. This becomes one lag where you have one data before today's. When you go to this uh, second lag you see there are two datas after we remove these things. Similarly here we have three, four and five. Right. Similarly in discharge if this 54 is today's then 43 is yesterday's, 46 is day before yesterday and so on until 5 days before if you see here 54 is today's 43, 46, 44, 42 and 50 that becomes the data of 5 days before 54. Even after removing these 5 elements you can see the target of the data is 55.8 which is the next day after 54. So this is how you remove the first 5 components. When we come to the last 5 components uh, after adding this directly you just remove it without any issue because they are all excess data and you have the original length again here after removal of all these data sets. So this is how you remove the data. So let's see what will how the data looks in a clear way after removing. So if you see here as I mentioned earlier this becomes our original data after removing the first five rows. This becomes the first lag having one day before uh, our today. This Two, 2 days, 3 days, 4 days and 5 days before our data which we want to analyze. Similarly for the discharge as well, 1 day, 2 day, 3 day, 4 day and 5 days. So this is how we can put lags for precipitation and discharge without causing an issue for prediction of tomorrow's data. You see here tomorrow is 55.8 that is what we are trying to predict. So now what we can do is we can just copy all these data these 5 rows here, these 5 rows here and this one into MATLAB and make the data in MATLAB. We can term it as data2 and what we can do here is we can just control shift lower arrow key and we can copy all these elements paste them here then again control shift lower arrow copy these elements put them here and finally target data here so previously they were three columns with original data. Now we have 13 columns with including lag data. 
So this is how you can choose the number of flags and develop the data so that you can make a rainfall runoff model. So in the next video, we will see how we can develop a model using this data and also compare it with the results of the original data using two inputs and one output instead of 12 inputs and one output. So that is it for this video. If you have understood the concept, please give a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have any doubts or something is not clear, you can put the questions in the comments and I'll answer it as soon as possible. Let's meet in the next video to develop the rainfall runoff model and see its performance.